Welcome to the Hobie Wave rigging video. We've created this video to help you in conjunction with your owner's assembly manual. This video is created in two sections. First, we rig the boat from a trailer or on the beach to ready for sailing. Second, we go through the more complete assembly from the box as from the manufacturer and ready for the trailer. In this case, our boat is not on a trailer. It is prepared and it's ready sitting in the grass. Be careful to choose an area that has no overhead wires or trees hanging over your rigging area. You must be able to move the boat safely to the water for sailing. Position the mast so that the mast base is near the mast step ball. Match the yellow arrow on the front crossbar to the yellow arrow on the base of the mast. Align them so that the mast can slip easily over the ball. Slide the mast base over the ball Insert the mast pin that will keep the mast base captive. If your wave mast is in two pieces, insert the upper section, the comp tip, into the aluminum section. If the main halyard is not already run and tied to the mast, you must take the line and run it through the mast head pulleys. Place the line on the back side of the mast near the luff track opening and move it forward through the pulleys to the front of the mast, down the mast and tie both ends at the cleat at the base of the mast. If the shroud wires are not already attached to the hull, we need to connect them to the mast and the hull. In this case, we're going to attach the wires to the hull first. Pin the wire to the seven hole adjuster and then slide the black vinyl boot over the pin and the entire adjuster. Repeat for the opposite side and then pull both wires up towards the mast tang. Be sure that both shroud wires will run freely up towards the mast tang, over the mast, not under the mast, and not under any other hardware. Remove the shrouds from the shackle, place the forestay wire assembly between the two shroud wires, and attach it to the mast tang. Screw the pin in tightly. Read and understand the caution labels mounted both on the front crossbar near the mast step ball and also on the base of the mast regarding safety issues. Pay careful attention to the cautions regarding overhead power lines. Overhead power lines can be extremely dangerous and can injure or even kill. Never rig your boat, launch, or sail your boat near overhead high power lines. When you're prepared to step the mast, stand at the rear of the trampoline near the mast, have your crew hold the top of the mast and lift it up to you. Take a careful look around for any overhead high power lines or tree branches that may get in the way. Lift the mast carefully. Be sure that wires don't get caught under rudder assemblies or other items. Turn your body facing towards the front crossbar and then continue lifting. As you lift the mast, keep your legs spread slightly to keep your balance. Push forward and walk forward on the trampoline. Stand behind the mast, legs spread wide to hold the mast securely while your crew prepares to pin the forestay. Pin the forestay assembly. There are many adjustments that are available. These are related to mast rake or the angle of the mast aft or forward. Initially place and pin the forestay at the top adjuster hole. The shrouds and forestay wire or rig must be tensioned using the main halyard or trapeze wire if your boat is equipped. Pull on the line aft and outboard away from the shroud to be tightened. At this point you will be holding the rig up when the shroud is released so be stable and in a position to do so. When the shroud goes slack, your crew can remove the clevis pin that holds the shroud in the adjuster. Move the shroud adjustment down a number of notches. You want to do an equal adjustment port and starboard, so move it down not completely all the way, but just a few notches, and then do the same for the opposite side. Be sure to install the drain plugs, one into the left hull and one into the right hull, as shown. Before installing the rudders, it's important to understand that there's a left and a right rudder and that the rudder has a locking mechanism built into the castings. To lock the rudder in the down position, make sure that the rudder blade is tucked all the way inside the lower rudder casting and then lower the upper rudder arm into the lower rudder casting and cam mechanism. The rudders are not symmetrical. There is a left and a right. Shown here is the right rudder assembly with the tiller arm bowing to the left. The left rudder tiller arm bows towards the center line to the right. To mount the rudder on the boat, it's important to release the rudder cam system. Lift the rudder up by the tiller arm and then 
lightly tap the tiller arm up near the end of the arm to release the cam system. Slide each rudder casting onto the pintles on the left and the right side of the hulls. Please note that there is a left and a right rudder. Take a look at the upper rudder casting and tiller arm. This tiller casting and arm should bow towards the center line slightly. Lock the rudder onto the pintle using the captive pin. It's preferable to wait to attach the tiller crossbar until after the sails have been raised. Once the rig is tensioned, it's time to raise the mainsail. Roll the mainsail out onto the trampoline. Before raising the sails, be sure that the boat is pointing into the wind. Check to be sure that each batten has tension on it and that it's properly cleated. There's a batten adjustment cap on the back of each of the battens. Pull the line with tension and cleat it in the small V-jam. Tuck the line underneath itself and be sure that there's a knot at the end of the line. Pull tension on each batten just to remove the wrinkles in the pocket. Once the battens are tensioned, you're ready to raise the mainsail. Hook the halyard shackle to the head of the sail and begin to feed it into the luff groove at the mast base. One person should feed the sail into the luff track while the other pulls on the halyard. It is easiest to help feed the sail by kneeling or standing in front of the mast facing the sail. Put one hand on either side of the sail, sandwiching it between your hands. Pull the sail up into the feeder rather than trying to push the sail up into the feeder. When the sail is fully hoisted, pull tension on the halyard and pull the halyard with tension on the center line of the mast in towards the mast. Pull the line all the way up against the mast and then ease off the tension as you pull down on the sail. This will seat the halyard lock into the two finger prong up near the top of the mast. Tie off the halyard on the halyard cleat at the base of the mast. Tuck the excess halyard line into the pocket on the trampoline. The downhaul line should be tied to the tack grommet or forward bottom grommet in your mainsail. Pass the downhaul line from the sail down through the cleat, back up through the sail, and then down towards the cleat once again. Pull tension on this line to remove wrinkles from the mainsail luff. After tensioning, tie the line off at the cleat. After hoisting the sail, you can attach the tiller crossbar. Fit the end fittings of the tiller crossbar into the end of the tiller arms. Insert the keeper pins as shown. Hook the main sheet block assembly to the clue of the mainsail. Be sure to bring the main sheet line up from behind the tiller crossbar before hooking it to the mainsail. Before going sailing, be sure that you have a riding line aboard the boat. The riding line is attached to the underside of the front crossbar on either side. Tuck the excess line into the pocket on the trampoline. As shown before, the rudders can be locked in the down position. They can also be locked into the up position. Lift up on the rudder blade and have the upper tiller arm lock into the lower casting as shown. Your Hobie Wave is now ready to sail. Once again, be very cautious of overhead power lines and trees that might snag the mast on the way towards the water. This rigging video does not include information about how to sail your Hobie. If you need information on how to sail, please refer to your Hobie dealer or local sailing club. There are also books and videos available and shown in the Hobie catalog. This concludes our trailer rigging section. The next section will cover rigging from the box.